In this Boudin tutorial, we're looking at HTTP requests. They will unlock tons of new possibilities of what you can do with Boudin. You can both receive and send all types of information, such as tables, files, images, you name it. And the best part is that HTTP requests will unlock a variety of different apps and databases that you can start plugging into your workflow with Boudin. And the best part is that with HTTP requests, you no longer need to have an integration with a unique app or database. HTTP requests allow you to tap into those automatically and use them as a part of your workflow. Let's take a look at a few use cases. But first, what are HTTP protocols? HTTP protocols or hypertext transfer protocols are the protocols that are used to transfer information on the internet. It is used to request and send data from a client such as your browser to the server where the information is stored. All HTTP requests consist of the four main parts. The first one is the action verb, for example, to get information from the server or to post information on the server. There are a few examples of those action verbs. The second part is the URL. This is the location of that server site. The third part is the header. This is the additional information that we might want to send along with the data. It can be the type of information we're sending, such as it can be a JSON or it can be an image and things like authentication credentials so that you can transfer the data securely. And finally, there's the body. This is the information itself that we're sending or receiving. Get requests. They're used to receive information from an app or a server. For example, you might want to request all of the breeds of dogs that exist out there, or you might want to get all of your calendar events from say Google Calendar. So let's go ahead and build an automation with a get request. Okay, here we are in GitHub and we have a repository with a list of different public APIs. Uh, the reason I want to take a look at public APIs is I might not want to create accounts, create credentials, create API tokens, pay, uh, but I can request information that's publicly available. And here, if you walk through uh, this index list, you have different categories ranging from music to cryptocurrency, etc. So I have found a public API on this website that allows me to retrieve all of the recent prices of different cryptocurrencies in the last 24 hours. We're looking at the API documentation that pretty much tells us the type of information we can get and different types of links that we can extract information from. For example, on this website, if we go to this location, we can receive this information about all different types of cryptocurrencies, their prices, their tickers, etc. So here's a cool hack. You can copy uh, this information over here and paste it and you will see all of the data over there. It's obviously not very uh, readable and it is not in a digestible format, but the data is over there. And the reason you can see this data is because this data is public. This is why we're looking at the public APIs. Otherwise we would have needed to tell the server our API credential. So let's open up Bardeen over here. So I'm going to click on create playbook and find that send HTTP request. And then we have get and post. There are only two. We're going to pick the get request. And here we're going to insert this link that we found on this uh, API documentation page. Let's open Bardeen again and paste the link over here. And we do not need to add any headers because there is no additional information we need to uh, communicate. So I'm going to click on done and save this information, call it uh, get crypto prices. Let's click on save and let's run this automation to see the information that we've achieved. So we have the file itself. This is a JSON file. And then we have uh, this table that we can take a look at. So it looks like we have 442 different cryptocurrencies over here. You can expand it if you want to. It looks like a really nice table. So now what you can do is you can add this information to a new spreadsheet, for example. It can be in Airtable, it can be in Google Sheets, it can be in Notion, you name it. So this is the interesting part where you actually build your automation. Let's go ahead and add a new action. Let's find Google Sheets. Here we have Google Sheets. I want to add rows to a Google Sheet and I'm going to specify the Google Sheet when I run this automation. So I pick ask me every time 
Okay, just like this. And then finally, we'll need to link the data coming from the previous action from the uh, get request to this spreadsheet. So we can just use commands. And here we have information from action number one, and we can just link it with one click. It's pretty uh, straightforward. So this is the automation that will get the information from this link and add the information into a spreadsheet of our choice. We can make this automation run every so often. We can make it run periodically. If you want to do that, you can uh, create a schedule, for example, and then you can say, hey, every 9 a.m. I want to run this exact automation to retrieve the last cryptocurrency prices from this link and then post them in this new spreadsheet. And instead, I'm going to click on when something happens. And then there is a command that is called when time has passed a certain duration. Let's try when time has passed one minute so that it's a little bit faster. This automation is going to run and I'm just going to click on done and we turn it into a quote unquote auto book. So every one minute I'm going to set it up because we do not have the spreadsheet specified yet. I'm going to um, add this create Google Sheet action with name uh, crypto prices. So every minute there's going to be a new Google Sheet created with all that information and that spreadsheet will be called crypto prices. I'm going to save and activate this playbook and wait until it runs, which is going to be in about 45 seconds. You can click on activity over here and see all of the invocations of this action, or you can click on show activity and see the new spreadsheet created over here. Okay, and this out the book was run. Here we have our spreadsheet called crypto prices. Let's click on it. And there we have all of the information, super nicely organized here, and that's it. Boom, and it was that easy. So if Bardeen doesn't yet integrate with one of your favorite apps, make sure to try out the HTTP GET request. And now let's try something a little bit more exciting, the HTTP POST request. We're going to send information from Bardeen to your favorite apps. For this use case, we're going to be using Bitly. Bitly is a link shortening service and Bardeen doesn't integrate it with it yet but we're going to create a workaround. And the best way to start is to go to your app's developer page where all of the information about how it works is documented. So here we are on Bitly's API page and let's shorten our first link. In order for us to do this, we need to access the API token. So we can go ahead and retrieve that. We need to enter our password. Okay, and our API token was unlocked. I'm going to copy it to my clipboard and go back to the documentation page. And here we have the post URL. This is the second part that we need. Let's go ahead and copy the URL to our clipboard, open Bardeen again, and insert it over here. And here we have a few more components. We have the body and we have the header. Let's take a look at the documentation page. Okay, and we might want to take a deeper look at the endpoints and how all of this stuff works and see how a typical request would look like. Here I'm going to pick browser and it looks like uh, we need to have the following headers. So we have the authorization and we have the content type, which is application JSON. What I can do is I can copy this information with the curly brackets and open my code editor. Okay, and let's post it over here. A very important part is that Bardeen is going to accept those uh, double quotation marks. And if you use the single ones, it's not going to work. So I'm going to replace those single quotation marks with the double quotation marks. Okay, and then finally, we need to insert our API token. Okay, so this is how our header looks like. I'm going to copy this information and go back to the browser, open Bardeen over here, and then paste our headers just like this. And boom, there we have the headers. And now it's time for the body of the request. Let's go back to the documentation page and look at the information that we need to post. Some information is required, for example, this long URL, this is what we need. Let's copy this variable, open Bardeen, 
and we're going to create a new column and call this column long URL. And now we need to tell the server, okay, what URL do you want to shorten? For this specific automation, I want to use the URL from the currently open page so that no matter what page that we're on, we can generate a new URL. So here is what we're going to do. There's a command that's called uh, get current page URL. So let's type current page URL. And this is a dynamic variable. So right now we're on this page. Uh, another time we're going to be on another page and this variable is going to change every time. Let's take a look at what other information we might want to send. Here we have domain. I'm going to copy domain and what domain means is the following. Uh, so here we are on our bit.ly interface. So if I was to manually create a link, so let's create a new link over here, I need to put the destination a URL. So for example, it can be this uh, developer page. Let me paste it here. We can have the title if we want to. It's automatically retrieved so you don't have to worry about it. And the, the main part is the following. We can use bit.ly's native bit.ly or we can use the white label domain. In my case, this is the subdomain as .bardeen.ai. We use it for branding and to make sure that everything looks uh, kind of nice. All right, I'm going to open Bardeen from here and Let's add another column. This column is going to be called the main. And here we're going to say s.bardin.ai. You can obviously pick one of the other ones that you have available as well. Okay, we're back at the developer documentation page and it looks like we are going to receive this response if it's posted successfully with the following information. There are probably some other variables that we can send through such as title or tags. In my case, I'm not really interested in that. Let's just go ahead and experiment with this specific one. So a quick walkthrough, we are trying to reach this URL. We're giving it our authorization token over here. And then we're going to be using the current page URL, which is dynamic. And we're going to generate a link with the shortened URL that starts with s.bardeen.ai. This is our automation. I'm going to click on done and call this automation bit.ly link. Let's click on save. And let's run this exact automation. And boom, just like this, it was instant. Here we have uh, our response. If we look at this JSON, for example, this is the information that the server responded with. If you look at the documentation, it's over here. So let's go ahead and open this information once again. I'm going to click on uh, this guy over here. Let's look at the table. And we were returned this link over here. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to test it. So if I go to this link, we're automatically redirected over here. And now I can go to that visual interface that we have access to, which is from Bitly and look at the links. Boom, here is our new link that was generated that goes to this URL. And of course, if you want to make it a little bit more sophisticated, you always can do that. We can open this automation in the builder once again and say, hey, I just want to see the exact destination link every time I run this. I don't want to go to the table and try to find the final link. So for that, we're going to add a new action and it's going to be uh, f uh, find links in text action, find links in text action. And then we're going to get information from action one. It can be JSON or it can be text. I can use text, for example. And then the pattern is going to be matching. So as you saw, the server turned us a bunch of information, different links, but instead I want to get that s.bardeen.ai link. So this is the link pattern. So the final link is going to uh, follow that specific pattern. I'm going to click on done, and I'm going to try running it from this other website, from bardeen.ai landing page. And let's run the automation. And just like this, here we have this URL. So we can test it out again, click on open and boom, there we have. So here we are in this landing page and we were redirected correctly. And this is it. I'm super thrilled for you to start experimenting with this HTTP get and post request. They will really unlock the possibilities of tapping into those third party apps and databases and getting your day to day workflows to the next level. And if you're a beginner programmer like myself, 
it may take you a little bit of time to figure out how it works. And the best way to get to learning faster is by joining our user community where you can ask questions from more experienced coders and no coders. Make sure to go to bardeen.ai forward slash community and I'm going to see you there. Cheers.